All right, check one, check two. Welcome to the Cannabis Coffee Hour with your host, me, Rob Cantrell. Oh man, I have an exciting episode, a great episode going across the country electronically via the Zoom uh, with one of my really dear, good, close Uno, friends that I started dos, out with in New York. Uh, very cuatro. funny. He was on Late Night with Jimmy Kimmel. He also tours with Mike Birbiglia. Uh, he does writing. He does sketch. He does a lot of stand-up. Please give it up for the one and only from Los Angeles, Chris Laker. Oh, man. Thank you. Chris, Chris. Chris, Chris. I, I'm happy to be here. I'm not from, I mean, I'm in Los, I guess I'm from Los Angeles. I spent the pandemic here, which means I'm from here now, I feel like, because I feel yeah, like I've been here my entire now, life. This no. moment, this, like this second, you're yeah. coming in to the, to the listener at home. Yeah. And I've let go of all the East Coast bullshit. I'm, I, I'm here. You know what I mean? I didn't, I didn't roll in here being like, oh, I'm going to be, why is this not like New York? You know what I mean? I bought a, I bought a Dodgers hat, you know, like I wear that. I yeah. proudly represent uh, Los Angeles. So, yes, you could say I'm from here. But, you know, the, the real Angelino people would be like, oh, you moved here. But I think that makes it more mine. Oh, you know what they say, you know. I chose no. it. Yeah, you chose yeah. it. It ain't where you're from. It's where I, your uh, head chose is it and at. It ain't where you're from. It's where your head's at, man. Exactly. And your head is in California, and I oh, love California. I've never yeah. been a hater of California. I've That's been a fantastic. lover. California and I were very young lovers at one time. <laughs> I yeah. had a blast I mean, there. New York's the best. Los Angeles is the best. You can like two things at the same time. Yeah, it's, you can it's, like it. And I'm sure if uh, <laughs> I, somehow I ended up in New Zealand, I'd be like, yo, New Zealand is rocking right now. I love it here. Why not? You're there. You might as well enjoy it. That's you know? one of my new dreams that I'm putting into my brain. I really want to go snowboarding in New Zealand. Like before, I didn't I even got, know that was a thing that happened. Yeah, people they have, do that, and the air there is so pure. Like they're like they have there. What I've heard is that it does feel like you're going back to uh, 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 Lord of the Rings time. Like it feels very prehistoric because it hasn't been touched that much. And there's mountains well, so, over there. So yeah, the it's also feels different. Everything feels wow. different. I've never been. Me neither. But, uh, but it, it, it uh, yeah, it sounds sounds great. <laughs> I'd like to, to to travel over there eventually. Have Although you been over to Hawaii? I never jumped to Hawaii, but that's the big jump from LA. To all the super big wigs. It's like all the super big wigs in New York are now in Miami. All the super big wigs of California eventually want to buy a place in Hawaii. Like it just keeps on going. Yeah. Well, you know, we we moved. I only, we only moved here two years ago, and then like the first year, Jacqueline was in New York practically the whole time. My girlfriend Jacqueline Novak. She she she's also uh, well. She's she's the the more successful comedian who uh, of of us. But uh, she had like this you know this show at Off Broadway. So I was in New York a lot, and then. We came back and we're like, OK, time to really be in Los Angeles. And then uh, we're actually she was supposed to go on tour and I had some things lined up. And, if, you know, and then, of course, that all, you know, then we were like, OK, cool. We got to stay home. <laughs> but yeah, Jacqueline uh, Novak has a, uh, a one man, a one woman show called Get On Your Knees that got rave reviews in uh, New York. She just murdered it in New York. Dude from Mad Men was showing up. Amy Poehler was popping and locking in front of the place. So she was, uh, and she's super talented, funny, cool writer. Uh, but uh, yeah, so she had some momentum going with this tour and this show, and she had to shut it down. And, yeah. And you guys just kind of posted up in L.A. And to have a little bit of heat in L.A. is fun, too. It kind of keeps the creative ball moving a little bit. Well, yeah, well, she's had a bunch of stuff to work on. And uh, I've just, yeah, and you just, it's been a lot of writing, you know, for both. I mean, I, I don't do like the Zoom shows or anything like that. The only, I, I did one pre recorded like minute of stand up for like a benefit, and that is it. I haven't, I haven't been pursuing 
I mean, no one's asked either, but that's okay. I, I, I need to, I, I didn't need to say that. I, I don't want to do, I don't want to do. No, this you show. shouldn't be before. I don't, I'm not, I'm proud of not performing during this time a little bit. I don't know about throwing the vid around. A I mean, I don't want to, but everybody's got to do what they're got to do, but I'm 47 and I just got word of a dude I knew in high school with a six-year-old kid that just died of COVID. Worked for a habit of a humanity. Like I just, I was like, oh, oh shit, wow. it's starting to get close. It's starting to get close. No, um, I don't, I'm, yeah, I'm not trying to get, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not even thinking about it. Yeah, doing. I haven't been trying to get it. And I don't like yeah. Zoom. I've just been concentrating on this podcast, the Cannabis Coffee Hour podcast. Like and subscribe. I've been writing, I've been auditioning some for like acting shit and they make you read with your mask on <laughs> and then they make you read without your mask. Uh, oh, wow. But uh, I didn't get it, but it was it was kind of fun to do. But I am, uh, yeah, I'm working on doing this podcast and then I do write, I have some script ideas and then, uh, and then this music project, like I just got, that's why I, I delayed everybody. I tried to have this new awesome audio equipment and I had it all lined up, but there was a little glitch. So I went back to my old blue mic, which is cool, but I was trying to take it up a notch. It's a, I like how the mic lights up too. That's kind of yeah. Funny. It does have a cool blue light. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. a good. This is actually a voiceover mic, um, which I do want to start getting out into. This is like good for voiceovers. But I've been I've been spitting some hot fire in the studio, so I needed to get I needed to upgrade uh, to make some beats and stuff. I wasn't spitting. Oh, I was hot. just watching. Uh, we have a master class uh, subscription. You know, mm -hmm. the master class. And I was just watching uh, Timberland's master class on producing and making beats. So, uh, what did you yeah, get out I, of it? Give me the cliff notes. Yeah. <laughs> what did you, as a, because I think all art forms is kind of basic. Like, if once you get the first three maneuvers, you could figure this shit out. What did you get from Timberland? Well, I'm still, well, he just was like, oh, just make noises with your mouth. And uh, that's what I saw. So, and, uh, I, I don't know how to. I, I'm gonna he have to rewatch. That. <clears throat> so, that's how he starts. Is beatboxing and that's. It was like just basically his methods that I haven't gotten deep enough into. I don't know if they teach you Pro Tools. It's just like him and his guys saying here. It's. I mean, it's interesting. Yeah, it's I like, like how hearing we about it. it out. Yeah. 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 It's totally. It's very interesting. I don't know that I'm gonna learn how to to make sick beats. Uh, you know, because really, why not just do music? I'm envious of you. You know how to you know how to make music. You've made music albums. That's yeah. I think stand -up every went, comedian. That's I all think music is coming want. back because of everything. The stand-up's kind of getting cashed out a little bit. <laughs> They've been going too hard on it. Uh, well, yeah. And music, yeah. but I don't know. Yeah. Everything, I think everything is everything now. Like that's why I'm not really tripping. And I've been reading. Like for me, I've been uh, weaving between reading Tibetan Buddhism books and listening. And I just got turned on to Cool Key. Like I've always been into Cool Key. Do you know about Cool Key? I, I, I'm I blanking on who Cool Key is. Cool but Keith I know is that an MC and it was always like MF Doom and Cool Keith. But oh, right, right, right. Abstract, he came, but he was a little bit older. He's like 57. But he's like from the Bronx and he started rapping in the Ultramatic MCs and the Ultramatic MCs was like Prince Paul, all these like, oh, yeah, 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 all these like original guys. So he's and then he kind of spun off and he did his own thing and became a weirdo like, you know, if you're in Vice magazine, like super niche and he had but you look at it, he's like, holy shit, this guy put out 30 fucking albums and they're all like out there like completely out there in outer space but awesome like some of them are like oh this is the sickest flow i've ever heard like are you finding musically that you're kind of exploring like going like now that you've been isolated for so long is it taking you somewhere else i mean comedically even the stuff i've been writing is fucking bonkers like i don't think i've written a lot but it's i don't know what the fuck it's gonna be it, it it's I might be a slam poet by the end of this fucking thing. I know. Is, I you know. know. Uh, and I think it's sad. I'm trying to go just oddball lately. I'm just like, because there's so much politics out there. And this week I did get, we can talk about it, Chris. We can talk about coffee and herb. 
but uh, I got sucked into the news cycle too hard and it just fucking, it messes with your head. It totally messes. I mean, it should mess with your head a little bit, but not to the point of like, you're checking in like all the time of what, you know, all the stuff that's going on. Oh, that, well, it's been dry. It's, that's been driving me nuts this whole time because it's a constant, well, scrolling the past like few days, it's just constant like CNN, MSNBC, I'm scrolling. I'm getting furious. I gotta bring myself down. I was, I, You're you know, I was, focus, and then you focus. I start yeah. focusing in. My wife told me like, you gotta stop. Like, I just kept on going. You know, they caught this guy, and they did that because the rest videos are so entertaining. The arrest, oh yeah, the rest videos are so awesome. What's going down with AOC? How they're all yelling at each other. But it is a psychodrama that kind of takes away of your real focus of what you're supposed to do. That's what I found. Right. And it's also just uh, spending like time trying to craft that perfect tweet that's really going to fucking nail them. <laughs> Is it going to change anything? Is it going to change anything? And like, and I, you know, I was, I, I was listening the other day to your, to your, uh, the episode uh, with Vince Averill. You're talking to Vince Averill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're talking about having that argument with somebody you know, and it's like, I've been battling that so hard. I want to like yell at, you know, I know a few Trumpy people. Yeah. And I want to fucking, what about this shit? I'm like, what the fuck's that thing? <laughs> Cause they're because they're stupid. They're not gonna fucking change their mind. Obviously, I mean not to. Yeah, I say I don't. I, I mean, sorry you're not. I'm not speaking. Yeah, yeah. I, I know, but I have the evil in me. Like I have it, but I with meditation and reading and and just living life and going through shit with family and everything. You really do have to forgive to move shit forward. And they fucked up like hardcore. But yeah. at the same time, my anger isn't gonna help. You know, I'm I'm not it even. It doesn't. But doesn't it feel like it's gonna? Yeah, it does. It's real. But they it's really, really fucked coming up, up this time. Like this time, they really fucked <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, but this is like the. I mean, how many times has it been like, okay, now you gotta, <laughs> now you gotta admit, and they still, so, still, 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 won't. still, and they're still, still trying to push still. this one through. They're still trying to push this. Holy one shit! I know, but. Uh, Holy I won't let's mention talk a names, little bit. But, let's slow yeah. it down because I'll go into yeah. it because I do sometimes when I start going off, I don't talk about coffee or weed. And I just yeah. want to say, what kind of coffee are you drinking right now? I'm drink, right now. I'm drinking an iced Americano. We Ooh. have an espresso machine. So that's I, it's I'm a it is still like pods. It's not like I'm really uh, making like good coffee. It's good to me, but it's, you know, it's the espresso pot and then a. Uh, I just put it over ice and add a little water and, you know, two, three shots. And I drink like, I'm, I'm drinking like six shots of espresso a day. Oh, and, uh, I love that's that. what I, I love yeah. espresso, man. I it's just, started, I've been, I went to Italy. I talk about it on the podcast and they do coffee, right? They're not the, everybody's got good coffee, but that I love a good espresso and I like the espresso cups. I love those tiny porcelain like when it's made clean and it's just good and it literally looks like good hash. Like it looks like just, oh, like a shot yeah. of that. Because, And the cool thing about it is like you get like the jolt, but your stomach isn't full of like 7-Eleven coffee. Like your stomach isn't mm -hmm. got like a gallon of juice in it. You literally just like absorbed it through your windpipe. Like it's not that much, but it takes you to freaking heaven. Yeah. My favorite brand is uh, that we, for is Bustelo. Oh, you know that? yeah, yeah, they make some good shit, and for they, even they actually coffee. make coffee makers, do they? I don't know, but they make. I mean, for regular coffee and espresso, I like I like uh, Bustelo. It's Italian. Yeah, I think that's Italian. Uh, let me see. Hold on. Yeah, it it's, is. Uh, that's the silver. It's the. No, I think. no that's. Uh, it's uh is that the mexican coffee yeah i think it's, I, it's in the yellow thing oh you're about yeah. that life oh yeah wow. yeah 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 and you do it in uh, uh, espresso formation i my friend did this when i lived in williamsburg yeah he used to get that because you can get it cheap you can get bricks and bricks of that 
but it makes oh, yeah. bomb ass espresso. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't drink their regular coffee, but their brick is really good. I like all that. I've I've had their instant coffee. You know, when if I'm if when I'm like you know if I'm living alone, I just drink instant coffee like an animal. You know. Oh, wow. So because yeah. like with the spoon, you just get the spoon. And yeah, I've just like li- you know because then I'm I'm you if tap I'm living water on it, just put tap I'm, water. I'm, <laughs> yeah, when I'm living alone, it's usually in like weird. It's been a while. I do all kinds of weird shit. The other day, like. I do a French press, but I'll squeeze the last bit of shots of it. And then I did that into like a little bit of like some milk coffee that I bought from the store that was like, not, like I do it all. Like a French press is really the, probably the best way to go. That's how I do it. I got one yeah. French press and that's how I do my iced coffee overnight. I either, and I have one of those electric grinders and I like to get the whole beans. Today for this episode, I am drinking Stumptown. This is their house blend, whole bean. Uh, shout out to my brother-in-law. He got me a subscription to Stumptown for four months. Every two weeks, I get a bag of Stumptown. That's nice. Yeah. That's good coffee. And it's and it and it's. Uh, they tell you exactly. This was roasted in Queens, roasted on one seven twenty one. So that was seven days ago. Oh, it's right. To, it, yeah, it just had to go across a bridge and boom, to your house. Boom, to my house. That's how nice. I say on this thing, like the direct shot. That's why I say with your podcast, you're right. The thing about this Scarlet sound machine, the guy who was talking to me said, it's really simple, but I don't know, for Zoom, it fucked up. But I do, I am looking into ingredients and anything there's just too many cooks in the kitchen or there's too much shit going on. Like it's got more it can mess up. Yeah. I mean, I, I, we have a fucking, uh, which we have like a, like a curd. So we're like just trash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those things, uh, yeah, they, they say they're bad for the environment, but they do work. Well, there's that too. They do yeah, work I mean, in those cups, those K cups. Yeah. You get into them. And at, well, I do enjoy them at the hotel. I will say they're better than hotel coffee. And uh, I mean, it's it's just for the simple, you know, it's it's just, yeah, simple. just like you guys, it's, yeah, you, it's not like you guys got a bunch of kids, it's just the two of you, you're going to drink one and a half cups of coffee a day or it's, know, the- it's bad. It's bad for the environment. It's bad. It's not it's not as good of coffee as if you use a French press. I, you know, you make deals in this. Uh, at okay, least I not some, perfect. We're all going to come out. We're all going to come out with some. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's like, listen, I hate Amazon and Uber. They're evil. Yeah, I use them <laughs> at occasion when I have to. Yeah. You, you can't. I don't know. So I, no, but I, I you think try. you just got to be kind of mindful, but it, you know, at the same time, you don't want to perf- like super perfection with that type of shit. And uh, some people are good at it. I, and, and I, and I, and I make them. On the end. I'm trying to uh, buy trees for some people. <laughs> I've been obituaries. Like instead of sending flowers, you could send, I was just looking, not to get depressed, but somebody that I knew yeah. drove, died of COVID. And I was like, I'm gonna plant a tree for them. <laughs> you could, they have it on the thing that you could plant a tree for them. That's but because nice I do think go. environment, I think it's people are gonna wise up. There's gonna be mass chains. Hopefully, uh, cannabis is gonna be legal in New York very soon. And I think that's why I'm kind of leaning in on this podcast with cannabis, uh, because I think it would help New York immensely. To I mean, it's it slightly legal, isn't it? Slightly. I mean, it's still there's a dispensary. You and... still can't just walk to the store and buy it like you can in California. Oh, God. It's like, it's the best here. It's the best. And you're not even, I know you, you're not the biggest pothead, but it's just so simple. Oh, that. Oh, well, the pandemic has changed that. <laughs> you know, you, you leaned in hard. I mean, it was just like became like, I'm stressed out. I mean, be, like the beginning of this, day, it was like crazy. And then it kind of just became how I like at the end of the day when everything's gone and I want everything's done. I want to shut down my brain. It's uh, and watch some TV, you know, then uh, I'll, uh, you know, I'll just have a little, you know, just a little bit, you know, it's like, uh, and uh, it's like, you could just order it to your house. 
just you pay with a debit card. It's it's you you just it feels good as it somebody good. who yeah, it feels when so you grow up with with it being like it it being such an evil terrible thing you know after school specials and shit and now it's like a product you know like with just like nice labels you know they play to your nostalgia i have like jay and silent bob weed <laughs> i got i got saint ides makes weed you know oh, like that's, wow. that's oh, that, like the saint it, ides joint have you ever yeah, taken a saint ides i used to love it that's that that we that we I haven't drank in since I was twenty one, but I used to love St. Ides. Yeah, and that was eye. that was my a couple crooked eyes. Yeah, I love that shit. And uh, so it's like they it that's what it was like. Oh, I'm back in. It's like I can't drink anymore. But I saw the St. Ides label, and uh, they suckered me. It was good though. It, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They make now a solid with, yeah, joint. A lot of it, especially with coffee and in cannabis and. Uh, you just see it with people's merch. A lot of it's packaging. Like that's the thing is like yeah. a lot of it's just aesthetic and packaging to like, oh, that looks kind of nasty and weird or oh, this kind of looks cool in my style. Like it's, everybody's yeah. making sweatshirts. Everybody's making their own clothes, you know? Yeah. Everything's kind of changing. Well, I mean, comedians always, uh, may, you know, road comics always, you always hear about how they make their money off the t-shirts. Yes. All right. So you, you you make a joke that has a fun phrase. You put that on a T-shirt, and there you go. What are you What are you smoking over there? This is called Pink. I think it's called Pink Kush, and mm. uh, yeah, I had it, and I still got a Noah guy, but it's just a classic glass one hitter. And yeah, it's I got one of those. Grounded, and I I just pull like one or two. Uh, during the day when uh, everybody's gone and uh, I'm doing creative stuff. And especially, that's one of the reasons I did this podcast. So I could still keep smoking pot and hang out with my friends because we're kind of, <laughs> we're kind of there like with comedians and you're there too. It's like you either go crazy or you, we all have to work really hard and focus and try to get that one leg up and get, you know, or we all have done it before. We just got to keep on doing it again. So it's like, uh, you don't see, you're, so you should be cutting everybody off and just focusing on your art, you know? Yeah, So I see sure. that with comedy, like in the beginning you hang tough and then there's like 10 years, it's like five years where you see everybody every night forever and ever and people you know you know everything and then there's like 10 years of people everybody just going off either they quit or they figure out how to do this thing yeah and now is like a good i mean now it's like i'm not i haven't talked to like people i would see all the time i haven't talked to since you know in in a year i know it's so good to you see know? you chris when was the last time yeah. you hung out it's been a long time. It's been probably over since a year. before I before probably two because I don't know if I saw you uh, in 2019 when I was kind of between here and there. I think it was probably 2018, so it's probably a little longer than that. But yeah. I haven't. I also was like starting to isolate and getting off in like a little bit anyway. So this like worked out fine for me. I mean, I think that you know I hate being like uh, you know whatever because it's like a fucked up time and yeah. I just was. Uh, lucky enough to have a, a be in a relationship with someone who is successful and uh you know and, and uh i mean i never asked her to carry the load but she didn't say anything and i just kind of let it keep on going uh, financially <laughs> the load you know i i mean i she's i take care well. I, she's a powerhouse she's doing i well. take care of the cat's litter i do these <laughs> i do the dishes and uh you know it's so it evens out i feel it even, yeah 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 and you just got to keep but you're still writing have you i mean you seem like that type of dude have you written a book is that something that's in your dream sphere i tried i wrote a book proposal like oh, years that's ago than i've been and uh it went out and did not get bought and in retrospect um I'm glad it didn't because I wouldn't like when I think about what like the shit in there, I'm like that I was trying to get uh, I was like, ah, I don't need that. That's a, that's the whole thing is everything gets even like you put out like 
I don't know if you have experienced this, but you know, I put out an album. I how was it six or seven years ago now? Oh no, it, yeah, yeah, six or seven, it's six years ago. And I wouldn't tell anybody to listen to that now. You know what I mean? It's six years old. I'm not proud of it in the same way I was like six years ago. And some of that is just like some of those jokes maybe are a little bit better than they used to be, and some of them are dated in a in a way, even just in a a stylistic way, you know, or, uh, or a content way. And, uh, so. You know, comedy it, doesn't have a good shelf life is what I've noticed. Very yeah. few go over five years and still is funny. Uh, that's why you really do got to live in the moment. And I try not to think about my history too much. And now I'm trying to think of not just not all the ego games, just I got to work on the joke because I know how to do it. You know, just do the work. You know, I don't know. It's it, it's like, you can't think, uh, like, I just think you got to be current. You know, by being current, yeah. you got to be real. And then by being real, you'll be current if you are yourself, you know? So, mm -hmm. and the jokes will stay around. if you If you work on them, they'll stay around five years if you're lucky, you know? But some stay ever, you know, some of my older jokes, I'm like, oh, that's still good. But some of them, I'm like, oh, shit, <laughs> I'm not proud of it at all. Yeah, no, I've, yeah, it's a mix, but it's, some, it's, uh, it, and you I know, that's art is going, like, we can put albums out ourselves. That's why I'm not intimidated. Like, right. Like, I just think it's like up to you, whether do you want to write a book or whether you want to do a podcast, whether you even want to do a TV show, it's almost like a whole other hustle going on right now. Well, you know, it's like watching other people's success and seeing how it is like you got to sell them on you first, it feels like. You know, like I was running around, I've written several pilot scripts. I wrote a, a, a feature length film script. You know, I did that book proposal. And really, it was like, that's all great. I'm happy with all of them, even though, you know, no one, it, they never get made you know it was an experience and fun to do and i create a, a story a that link i to something else yeah like, all that shit's a link but i don't feel like any of it is worth anything until they are like asking for it and, and that's what it seems like or that's been my experience and what i've seen other people where it's like they prove themselves in what other in some other way whether it is like some like crazy Twitter following or like social media following or like uh, with it, with Jacqueline with her like show uh, that gets people interested and they say okay we know you can do something what else do you have as opposed to just like here's a script they're like I got a million fucking scripts from people like you that think it's great you know like there's just too much so you got to break through the noise and then those things are still there uh, not, though. I mean, reality is, I've been getting into this thing, man. The yoga of the mystic, man. I'm talking about breaking through, like, like I, I've been doing like these meditations. Like, I do think, Chris, it's only like ten thousand things that you really are connected to. So everybody's going through these parallel universes and stuff like that. But these opportunities are always there, and it's usually in the ether and it's usually right in front of your fucking face and that's where i'm like i know it's yeah. right in front of my fucking face and i just got to uh it, be quiet and focus like that's i mean been my hardest thing is just you know through all the noise is the focus and yeah dealing yeah. with jealousy like i wake up i catch myself but uh in la it's harder because everything's geared toward fame and everything so it's it, it fucks with your head a bit but uh Another thing, but you kind of are right. Like, if you want something, you can't take it from somebody. You have to wait till it's given to you. Well, you have I, to be have, so good yeah. that they give it to you. You know what I mean? Like, you have to build, yeah. you got to do, let's say you got to do all your shitty short little videos and your podcast and get, 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 and get something going where it might catch a little something and then somebody gives something to you. But whenever I've been yeah. like, yo, that's a hot ass podcast. Yo, can I get on, you know, it, or let me get on that TV. Like when I'm kind, when they feel the thirst, I'm trying not to be the thirst. I'm trying to like go inward. Like I really, uh, with yeah. meditation, I think 
outward is not real. Like, like outward is temporary because it's ever floating. You know, the, the, the outward, like the politics, this, all that, but inward yeah. who you are, if you can uh, complete that circle, who you are, you know, that's when you just don't have that thirst. It's hard not to have the thirst in LA. <laughs> in well, yeah, I, I, well, I'm like kind of at peace with a lot of stuff is because well, I spent many years being jealous and all that and being angry at the, at the business. And, and then it's just like, Oh, none of this makes sense. You know, we're kind of like pirates and, you know, it's just like, you know, looking to, it, it's, it's like you, either you, either you got to just keep going. You didn't, I didn't do the thing to get me the thing that I wanted. I just didn't do it yet. You know, like it's, it's not, yeah. it's a, I can't, I, and you could live I can't blame other people for years, it. Or you could live another week. Like nobody knows. Yeah. So like, and everybody's on a different time scale and time doesn't even matter because nobody's in control. So it's like, it's just, you know, it is the wild, wild west is definitely out there in California. Yeah. And so I, I'm, I'm, uh, like, I'm not, I'm not stopping. I'm not giving up. I have an accounting degree that is not worth anything because I got fired from my last real job 11 years ago. So fuck, you know, it's either do I, <laughs> something's going to happen eventually or uh, you got to think that something is going to happen because yeah. you've been down this road before. That's the thing about getting older. You've been down this road and you've been down this fear road and you know, the fear doesn't lead to anything. And it's uh, like yeah. something always works out at the tail end, or if you concentrate on the good shit that's going on in your life, like weed and, uh, <laughs> and working out and music and, and cooking and uh, eating and, you know, meditating, like that's kind of where I've been heading, uh, trying to keep my mind kind of positive during these times. Because, uh, uh, you know, know, Chris, you're very talented and you can write your ass off and you can do stand up and you're funny and you're friends with Mike Berbigley. Uh, who knows? He's probably get a movie next year and he's going to need some dude with long hair to be his best friend. You know, I don't know. So you just that's well, kind of like the shit, man. You just got to, you know, keep it moving and try to stay stay friends with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Mike's been very helpful uh with my with my career but uh and yeah, uh hopefully lead. he will cast me in a you know I, I i if he would cast me in a movie that would be that would be great i don't know what his his plans are for that i, I want to do more acting like i want to do like little bit parts like i've noticed that about me like i've been thinking about what do i want and stop looking at other people what they want because a lot of people are whack <laughs> so a lot of people have whack-ass styles i'm like man because uh, I, I just want a small A-frame up in Vermont and, uh, and, and some Wi-Fi and then, uh, no, get on TV a few times, get, a, get in a movie, uh, put out a music album, and uh, hopefully when the bid's over, try to do some more stand-up. And I right. want to do sketch. I like little, I like little vignettes. I like acting. Not, I don't like heavy acting. I like light acting. <laughs> I don't well, want hanging you? out on set. I like I like oh. little snacks. I like small oh, yeah. talk. <laughs> I would be as a I would I think I'd enjoy being like a SAG extra. I've done non SAG. That's hell. They treat yeah. you like garbage. But SAG extra. That's really that's really sweet. But you know, like what is it? But it's kind of nice all to be things... just one above though, one above extra. Because I've done extra right when I got to San Francisco. Uh, I signed up for like this little acting, you know, agency or whatever. And yeah. they sent me out and it was for no money. And it was, I had to wear a suit and I to be in a Metallica video. Like they were on the steps and they needed a thousand people to like walk through this thing, like on the steps as a suit and everything. And yeah. I was already doing stand up, and I waited there and I was there for like four hours. And they were just treating us like mules. You like literally like, uh, like farm cattle. And I walked off. I was like, and I wasn't even getting paid. Like, I was like, ah, fuck this. I never even called the agency. I like, I never, I was like, fuck this. 
Yeah, I did. I I was in uh, and I I worked on an episode of Luke Cage oh, on wow. Netflix. Episode four, you'll see me on the bleachers. I'm about forty pounds heavier than, that, but uh, just to let people know, I'm aware of the weight. I, I was aware of the weight issue, but uh, and uh, it, it was the worst. Well, I I, I fluctuate, you know. Yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. Old. I get I get. I get, I get, I, I lose weight, then I'm like happy. So I eat a lot and then I, you know, it, and then I, and then I eat until I feel terrible again. Yeah. But, uh, the, so, and it was, but it was just like, you know, they don't let you, they don't let you drink the coffee. Yeah. On yeah, the they set. Don't, yeah, yeah. It's like, there's coffee right there. You can't let me like stay away. <laughs> you know, they, they throw you like they a variety. They pay you little to treat you like shit. Like you yeah, really and do. They, and you're really not supposed to talk to the real actors. Like it's just known oh. on set. You're not supposed to go over there. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I wasn't trying to talk to Luke Cage or anything. I just wanted oh, a cup I, of coffee. Yeah, I know you were. Yeah, they just they know you're. A I know. Master. I've been a PA. I know. I understand. I know how it works on set. But it's just yeah. So yeah, but out of all those things, you know, music, acting, right? It's like. What is the thing? Like, if you had to pick one, th if there was one thing, like this is the, the fucking thing that you want the most. What is it? Is it? What What do you think? I don't know, man. That is a good question, Chris. That is a good. Question. To me, stand up is you know, like if I could get that one, like you know, it's like if you really, I, I feel like all the great stand ups they get like a they get like a run, a period where they just fucking put out, like. The best work, and then yeah. sometimes they stick around, and it's hit and miss. And sometimes usually have one or two specials that are good, and then the right. rest is kind of media. I mean, I'm just sorry. It's that's just the basic math. I will say that you know Bill Burr and Chris Rock and Dave Chappelle have kind of broken that barrier, and George Carlin broke it a little bit, but you know it, it's still not as hot as that banger. Well, I mean, bring the pain to me is set to the bar for yeah, everybody. It's such a, it's Still, a, it's a cold banger. Like it's just. I mean, that and bigger and blacker, and I would also throw in for me personally, Elephant in the Room, Patrice yeah. O'Neill's Elephant in the Room. Those to I me, agree. those 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 three to me are kind of the bar, of like, like mm -hmm. I, I if I could somehow meet that once or twice. You do it once. I mean, you, you they do, can't you take only it away. Get like you, one or two. Like and even, even if, but if you Chappelle's do it once, very first special, like that first one that was on HBO, like that very killing first, them softly, killing them softly. It's hard to like that thing is like that thing was like played like radio music, like in the background. People that didn't even didn't yeah. like comedy would always laugh at that shit. Like that. that yeah. I mean, that was a stone cold banger. And all this yeah. stuff is great. Like all their stuff is great, but they usually Sam Kinison the same way. Like everybody, you know, his, the older Sam Kinison's kind of whack. Like the young oh, Sam the, Kinison <laughs> is like fresh. Yeah, well, and that was kind of like it blew everybody's mind at the time. Oh yeah, you know, I remember it, seeing it, him on the Young Comedian. He there was nobody hipper, and in that moment, and with that cadence and where he came from and how he delivered it. It was uh, completely unique and completely him and completely like, yeah, it was dope. It was just like, it was- uh, First time was, I uh, saw Sam Kennis, uh, yeah. Back to School, that movie Back to School, when he played a teacher, that was the first time I saw Sam Kennis and when he's like yelling at Rodney, which yeah. is a great, that is a great movie. I, I've I, watched I, that right watched, now. I watched it maybe five or, like, uh, let's see, yeah, like, Oh, maybe seven years ago now, but it was it was still good seven years ago, and uh, it's a great movie. Yeah, that and Caddyshack say. still holds up. The acting of Rodney Dangerfield always is entertaining. Whenever he's on the screen, whenever he's anywhere, he's always funny and he's always entertaining. Um, yeah. Not every movie. It did that Ladybug movie, but I would probably still watch that. Ironically, I think that that was good. <laughs> I mean, it's a, back, back, to me, back to school is like the best one. I mean, or yeah, back to school. Dude, is the back best to school is great, but then there's Easy Money that he did with Joe Pesci. Oh, don't, dude, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, dude. I like, fucked, I, yeah, I Easy Money's up. like Scorsese I, type first, shit. No, I grew up on Staten Island. 
is so easy money is you know that's yeah. I, I I was in the I used to go to that church where they have the where they have the wedding. Oh wow! That's our Queen of Peace. I think I didn't it was. know you grew up on Staten Island. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It's uh, it's uh, easy money and uh, and easy Wu-Tang money, Clan yeah. and uh, and Alyssa Milano. Those are the the three things we we have yeah. to claim. Well, Easy Money uh, had a great uh, soundtrack by the one Billy Joel, and it also has Joe Pesci as the co-star. And Rodney is smokes weed in the bathroom. I just remember that opening scene when he's shaving and he's trying to, and his friend and Joe Pesci's like honking the horn outside, like "Let's go to work!" and all the kids are everywhere, and he's hitting the roach in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because uh, because uh, the whole thing was he wasn't supposed to drink or do drugs or curse for like all, yes. how long was it for like thirty oh, days like, he wasn't he was yeah or cheat on his wife <laughs> or cheat on his wife he had to be a good person he had to he be an a, actual good person it was, it was, it was so like, hard it was so hard for him to do it was just so accepted that he was gonna just eat pills drive drunk and cheat on his wife that it was like how crazy and she was like you know no you can do it <laughs> that's what the normal man always did in the 80s in the 70s people uh, drove yeah. drunk people cheated on their wives people yeah. did nasty drugs because we didn't have internet yeah there was no internet there was no there was uh, only three, and you and uh yeah you would just either and you play. couldn't get caught doing anything there was no <laughs> it was like they you could murder somebody in the 80s yeah, yeah and yeah, yeah. uh just move to another town. They would need, yeah, you would need like the best police force of all time to do forensics and. Yeah. And they well, there's open and cl- close uh, case, like, blam. Yeah, they'd have to like watch you do it. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I love that movie, Easy Money. It's really funny. What was the last movie you watched? You, you, do you rock out Netflix? Yeah, we watched. Uh, oh, you know what? The, uh, the last movie I watched was i watched a i watched a bootleg of this movie uh, a promising young woman it's not out yet it's gonna be out soon so good oh, it's man. really great i don't even i don't i don't like to tell any i'm not good at at uh at, at giving like movie reviews other than like oh it's great you know I'm, uh, it's, she it's really <laughs> no <laughs> I got sucked into enjoying the Queen's Gambit. I, yeah, I won't yeah, lie. Yeah, yeah. My girl tried to get like me on that. Su- I was in for like a few a episodes. I feel like a sucker, but I enjoyed it. But uh, and, and that's I, didn't, I, I, I wasn't feeling the new Karate Kid. The new what new Karate? Oh, Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai. I loved the first two seasons, but I just watched the third, and it was wigging me. I was I, I couldn't. I, I don't know. I watched the first season and then I'm like, I, you know, I don't like to go down like crazy nostalgia, like holes. Like I kind of like, can I, I'm just going to, I'm going to live in the current time period. Like I'm not like immune to it, you know, uh, and I like it a little bit here and there, but um, yeah, I'm not going to just. Yeah. It's not the most creative thing in the world. Yeah. It's kind of like, yeah. Well, yeah, good, good. It's it's good to get uh, Johnny working, and you know, and everybody's having a good time, and people love it. And, and people love it. I, yeah, it, you know, the first two seasons was great. I didn't want to cut you off. Did you want? I wasn't yeah. sure whether you're going to plug that movie or not plug that movie that you saw. No, a very promising young woman is very is, is great. I mean, people should see it when it's available, or you know, you can. How find did it. you get your hands on it? A friend said he really liked it. And I was like, oh, is that out? And, and he said, no, I got it off BitTorrent like a normal person. And then he just sent me a link. Dude, that's um, a serious film heads. Yeah, but it was like a screener that got leaked because it yeah. says like property of on the thing. But I feel like I'm in show business. There's no bootlegs for me. Everything's a screener. I yeah, should be. I got a whole case of screeners back there. You know, and I'm, I'm telling. Sad. I'm telling people you are sad, huh? Yeah, I've Good been for sad you. for I pay my dues, even if I just do like one little thing. It's only like 150 bucks, but I went, I went, I went raw dog for a good like two and a half years. But whenever I can catch up, I catch up. Yeah. And, uh, because yeah, the when you get a gig, I did get to do the last OG last season. I in t- my 2020, I got on TV. 
It wasn't a big nice. wall. I, I had to had like eight lines that got cut down to one. But I made the screen and they paid me and then they paid me a royalty just recently. And uh and uh but uh I was sad. that's a fun show, last OG. Yeah, it's a great show. Yeah, it's very yeah, the funny. The first two seasons are amazing. Third season it was good, but it was a it's different writing, and now they have a new it's coming back for a fourth season, so we'll see. Maybe you can get back on there. Yeah, that's what I want. Yeah, totally. I would love that. That's exactly, that's what I'm saying. Like I had four lines, it was one day, but I was sad. Was there room for you to return? Did they, uh, yeah. do you think that they could, yeah. Yeah, there is. Or, yeah, there is. What's your character in the, sh which episode? I was the I, barber. I, I was the barber. I'm in the 13th episode and it was supposed to be Donnell Rollins and they called me, Donnell couldn't do it. But I'm the barber in the black barber shop with uh, Lord Jamar from uh, Grand Poobah. Uh, I did ah. see with him. And then there was this other deaf comedy poet guy that was like hood, like not, I mean, he was famous. Like he was, uh, but I looked him up like, yeah, he did deaf, uh, deaf comedy, no, deaf you mean, poetry. You mean from uh, poet. brand, you mean from brand Nubians? Yeah, you're right, from brand yeah. Nubians. Grand yeah, Puba yeah, was yeah. in in, in brand, uh, yeah. Uh, much respect to Lord Jamar and Grand Puba and Brand Nubian. You are a hundred percent correct. Oh, I need good. to slow down. Too much coffee. Oh uh, yeah, well that's a, a great a great Brand Nubian song. The best of brand, one of the best. Yeah. That's the thing about Brand Nubian is like slow down is like one of the best hip hop songs. There, you that know, album. Like, that album is amazing. I don't think it it didn't really make it so far out of New York. No, in DC album. it was huge, man. DC, I think it was an East Coast record and yeah. hip hop hadn't broken out like that. But the thing about Graham Pooba, I always think it was, he was like the first Jay-Z. You know, he was like this, like he was part of Brand Nubian and then he broke off and did all these singles that were huge. Like he had this, almost Bobby Brown like career in hip hop. It's weird. Yeah, his so that, that first solo album of his I liked a lot. Um yeah. But uh do you it, listen to hip hop still? Yeah, sure. Nice. I mean I try to, you know, I I, I just try to What's the even, last thing in your Spotify that's hip hop? Uh probably Savage Mode 2. Something like that. What's that? That is that uh, Wu Tang? Or no, it's uh, no, it's a uh, Twenty One Savage and um, what's uh, fuck? What I'm like Drake? Sa oh, and uh, and um, and Metro Boomin, Twenty One yes. Savage, Savage Mode. That that album is yeah, really good. I, I know about Metro Boomin. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, and like I listen to old shit too, you know, of course, but like I try to, you know, it's even sometimes I listen to some like, you know, the kind of like SoundCloud kind of like rap and I'm like, I don't, it's like, it's fine, but I feel like I have to listen to it at least, you know, like I got to listen to like Trippy Red just to be like, all right, I know what this is. I, I know, know what it, it sounds is. like. And there is, there, I, yeah, like I, I, dude, I remember, like you're talking to a hip hop head. Whenever I went to a comedy show, it, whether it was a deaf comedy show or it was, a, it was anything, I would know whatever hip hop was playing. I would know the artists. I would know everything. But then yeah. there was just one year that I went to the Knitting Factory and they were playing like Gucci Man and all this trap shit. And I didn't know, any, like it fucked with my head. I was like, oh shit, I don't know any of this stuff. And some of, but I have to say, uh, it's not for me. It's not my favorite. I do, I do like some Gucci man, like, and it'll get- Oh, Gucci, yeah. I like that. And yeah. then, uh, and Pop Smoke was gonna be huge. Like I like shit, Pop Smoke a lot. That shit was I'm gonna not, be, just, that, that was yeah. gonna be, but the message, I'm not really, it seems to be even hyper violent. Lately, like I'm old, dude. I'm becoming. I got, I got kids. Like I don't want to listen to violence. Like so, and the hip hop that I was born into, Houdini was my first concert. You know, like I remember when hip hop wasn't violent, and not right. talking about. I don't want. Like I do think, like if you talk about guns, or have guns, like that energy comes back to you, dude. My first, my first hip hop concert 
was, uh, let me see, UMC's Leaders of the New School, Tribe Called Quest, De La Soul, Oh, at wow. the Ritz, at the Ritz in New York. Oh wow! Yeah, that's a that was, banging that was, show. That was when Low Low End Theory and De La Soul is Dead was out. Holy shit! You know, and so and that's like you know, Bust, so Busta Rhymes was there for scenario and everything. You know, it was like for leaders of the new school. You saw Busta yeah. Rhymes do that verse yeah. live yeah, yeah. in New York City. Yeah, man, that's a good. You know, you, you know, Dude, if you, if that, you, and and the Ritz was like almost midtown and that was what, what yeah. year was that 1991 that was nine, or 91 91 90, yeah, might have been early 92 i think it was winter so yeah but yeah like, yeah yeah that's when buster yeah. ryan was that's like, jesus you saw row row dungeon dragon you saw the dungeon yeah. dragon come out yeah yeah it was pretty it was pretty exciting uh, it was, yeah, it was great. It was. That's and, what I hear about Buster Rhymes. Like most rap dudes, like <laughs> not the rag, but a lot of hip hop live shows are not that good. But a few of them can crank it. Run DMC killed it. And Houdini, like I saw dudes that fucking ripped it. But uh, yeah. I heard Buster Rhymes was amazing live. Like he was just amazing. That 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 concert was, yeah. Everybody, it was just like um, it blew my mind. And. Uh, you know, it, that's up there. Like, and like to listen to those uh, tribe beats over a big system like that. Yeah, I mean th that music. You know, because like '90s hip hop, I had you know nostalgia for. Uh, but I think I feel like a lot of it you listen to now, and you're like, you could go try to go back and listen to like, uh, fucking Far Side. Yeah, or you know Onyx or something like that, or something that's like just so fucking '90s. But like Tribe Called Quest, like Low End Theory and Yeah, Onyx, I didn't really fuck with. You throw your guns in the air, stick. Like I never felt like some of those jams. I get the aesthetic, but I didn't think they were on point. Like I don't want to. I don't want to get punched by sticky fingers, so I won't. I'll stop. No, I. I mean, I'm just talking about like the sound of it. Like that yeah, song. Yeah, that's what I mean. Slammed, the sound of it. Like, I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't. I, no, but I tell time, you, who, you know who it. kept it rocking and who's amazing is Red Man. Red Man, yeah. Redman's never whack on any track ever. And he's still going. I still see him like his Instagram live. He's got he's got a project coming out. He's got a verse on a song and it just slays. Uh, he, yeah, he's like one of those people that just kind of, you know, you can, it's, the great thing about hip hop, I think is that you can age pretty gracefully if, you, if you're not trying to be the new shit. You know, because then it kind of get. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to mention names, but some people, yeah. when you like, I don't know, it gets embarrassing after a while. But some of these, you know, like yeah, but someone like Red Man, it's just like, oh, of course, you know, like That's I, I say, is. like, yeah, like that is who oh, is. that whole Wu Tang universe to me, you know, Wu Tang is forever. You can't, yeah. you can't fuck with that shit. Those guys are them. 100% all the time. And it's like, it's a beautiful thing. I met Method Man at the last OG. He wasn't in my episode, but I was hanging with Tracy when I was touring with him on set. And I had a Pink Floyd t-shirt. And it was the first time I met him. It was like back there, back in the trailer. I mean, he was like, hey, this is Rob. And I was like, yo, man, big fan. He was like, yo, I'm a huge fan of Pink Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> that you know, and I had my hair yeah. like this, you know, and I came up to him and he was, he was tripped out. Like, he knew I was a stoner. Yeah. You're, <laughs> That's what I liked about Wu-Tang. Like, they liked, like, Pink Floyd. Like, they got stoner shit. Like, those guys were into, like, comic books and karate movies and, you know, anything heavy metal they would be into yeah. or weird. Well, that's, all those dudes were, like, you know, all that, that kind of, late 80s early 90s there was a lot of classic rock metal influence in all of it you know i mean yeah, yeah. that's Especially what they sample the graffiti world a lot of the early graffiti writers were like white metal heads from like staten island and long you know they were just like weirdo new york uh, metal heads doing but they did that hip-hop they were a part of like that style like the wild style like they it was all kind of i would say these were like graphic designer brains 
that were bubbling up through society, you know? Whether what uh, kind of background you had, whether you were just creative, it's like some shit was gonna come out. I mean, New York City, like the subway, when it was really just like graffiti the fuck out, was the coolest shit in the fuck out. Oh, well, As like, that's why I moved here. Right on. But then they, they cleaned it up by then. I know, Not like, I know. You know, and they would, when, when I was a kid and I'd see like a whole fucking subway fucking car covered in this sh- like huge fucking Donkey Kong, <laughs> you know, oh, like, yeah, Donkey like, Kong like, lettering and the, you know, and and, all the colors that and, you like. You know, and what happened, but they would have Mario and fucking Donkey Kong and then all the fucking whatever. You know, just yeah, do like these table. elaborate fucking like pieces. It was uh it was you know, and you knew it was like these guys were like breaking into fucking train yards or whatever the fuck they were doing, risking their goddamn lives. <laughs> it was dude, like I want art and the art, yeah. like the lettering is even better than the advertising guys. That's what's crazy, you know. That's is like that's why you can't hold anything sacred. Like the fucking best art comes from the dirtiest, nasty. You know, the the lowest form is actually the highest thought. You know, and nothing is everything. You know, but uh, Chris, I don't know how long we've been. We've been yeah, we're going on about fifty minutes, man. So you've talked oh, yeah. about weed. You've talked about herb. Uh, you're in California. Uh, it's a uh, uh, what's some positive vibes you can send out to the universe? Some or positive, you don't even have to send out some positive vibes. Something to sign positive off. Positive vibes, man. You, dude, we're coming. The vaccine's coming. Yeah, that I like Trump hearing is, that shit. Trump is leaving. Trump is leaving. Where I, I say, like, that to me is like New Year's. Is, like, is Inauguration Day. It's like new beginning. Not really. I don't, dude. Some shit could pop it's off. It's like. I understand. Yeah, there's shit going down. I think there's. The a, I think crazy. we got two months of super darkness, but I think April is going to be the like. I think April we might be out of a lot of this mess. Hey, like, did you? Ever, I, I had a year once when I was I, I, like that. Like, three family members just go, just died. Like, boom, boom, boom. And you feel like, oh, this is the fucking. Is this? And it's just like you know, like two suddenly, and then one. Not quite, but still, it was just like you just felt like you're always going to a funeral, and like this is, it, it, you know, and then, and and then it just stops, you know, like it's like so that's what I feel like. I think we're in now. We're in like this kind of like it, like it just is like what the fuck? It's just like Trump, all Trump bullshit, right? Everything related to that dude. Then it's like pandemic, and then it's like you know, then. George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and, and and all and and all of it and reckoning with that with with the with the racism that is just like you know ingrained in every part of our society <laughs> and then I mean I don't mean to laugh at it but it's just like fuck you know and then uh, and 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 then the election and all this shit and it's like fuck it's like gotta chill a little bit. Oh, it's you definitely know. good. Good shit happens. That's the thing. Yeah. It's like bad shit goes down and good shit happens. Good shit. That's like, it's a part of the equation, you know? And I do think a lot of it's just concentrating on, you know, just emptying your mind and uh, to the point of not buying into a lot of this stuff. Like, I'm not saying ignore it, but it's not yeah. doing us anything. It's not worrying doesn't do anything for us, you know? And right. enjoying life and enjoying coffee and herb and rocking out to some tunes uh, and hopefully doing some comedy really soon. That's what I'm hopeful about, but you're right. Yeah. The vaccine will come, you know, and then, you know, we got a new president in there and. Uh, I mean, it's like Biden's not like the fucking, I don't think it's like a Biden's going to, you know, whatever, but God damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, going to yeah. no, be no, the best leaders, so much more chill. So much so, No, no, like, we don't need oh, a narcissist. God. We got a lesson in, yeah. in, in what narcissist is. You know, it's just yeah. like we're in the business of narcissism, but it's like we're getting a, a lesson in the ego. I really believe there, you know, the worst shit, like you always find something to laugh about. And, you know, as much as that capital thing was, there's a lot of funny shit that, you know, the memes that were coming out. I mean, that Goodfellas, you, did you see the Goodfellas? Like they playing, yeah. 
the music over all those guys getting that was some of the funniest shit I've seen, which is sad. I mean, the guy, the guy, like, like, kind of cry yelling about not being allowed on the plane <laughs> is my favorite fucking thing in the world. I know. Like when he's like, when his voice goes up, like, they call me a terrorist. They're trying to ruin my. Life. You hear his voice cracking, and he's high. Pay- you're like, hmm. Mm. It's just. It's, it, he had it's, no idea. He had no idea. Yeah, yeah. It, there is some justification in in finding. I I don't know. I find uh, the universe as bad as shit goes. It just equals its way out. Like as much as bad as this stuff, it showed that those guys were fucking clowns. Like it. Literally, yeah. It showed it to the world in a very graphic way that they were dangerous clowns. Like and there's mm-hmm. more clowns than ever because King Clown clowned out them you know yeah uh, i'm a little i'm worried about what's to come in the next in the in, in the next like, like you said the next couple of months might be pretty dark but yeah i think the next couple that's why you know everybody wash your hands mask or i don't know you do what you gotta do but i take vitamin d i take coc 10 i do stretches every day I, I try to meditate for an hour i try to you really can start over every day, like every second you could start over. And that's what they say about awareness. Like when you see, when you feel things click, I just read this thing. It's not even a second, it's a millisecond. You know what I mean? When, have you ever had the universe just click? Like you just kind of see it all? Like it's, it's even smaller than a millisecond, that awareness. But it's everybody has it, and the, it, yeah. And just we just gotta always be aware of that. Like you know, it could end in any second. So why the drama for your mama? I don't know. Right. No, that's why I don't get into to to any kind of online like fighting or anything, anything like that, or really even if I'm gonna tweet something, I try to make it a joke. Yeah, you're always you know? funny. Check out your. Uh, Twitter. I mean, you give a my shout Twitter. Out to- yeah. You want to yeah, give a shout just, out? I'm just at Chris Laker on Twitter and Instagram. I don't post that much on Instagram because I'm just home. But so it's pictures of my cat here and there, and uh, or Jacqueline and um, or Jacqueline and the cat. And uh, and I have a podcast called Overslept with Chris Laker, which is just me talking into my phone when I wake up every day for like <laughs> ten minutes. It's like ten minutes long, so it's like it's like whatever. But um, uh, yeah, that's it. And, uh, you know, after uh, after this, me and Jacqueline are going to do some vision boarding. So that's where oh, we're yeah. at. You know yeah. what I mean? Keeping the dreams going. And that's what it's all about. Yeah, I'm doing I haven't done my vision board, but I want to. And I do think like a lot of it is just putting it into your brain and eventually getting there. If you can block out a lot of the bullshit. Yeah, you can. Do, it's all it's all right there. man. It's, it's all right. right there. There, it's, like, dude. it's like you see you've seen it. You've done it. You've been you've there. I rem- I before I right before I started stand up, right, right before when I was really getting it was burning in my stomach. I'm like I'm gonna fucking do it, and I was writing and like getting. I wrote for like six months before I even did my first open mic, and I saw that first season, a last comic standing, and I see I see you, I see Rich Ross, <laughs> I see that Dave Mordell, and yeah. I'm like look at that fan. That fan. Uh, Season did one. I, did, 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 I, did I not laugh at that fan? Fuck yeah, I laughed at that fan. <laughs> Much shit as he caught for winning that thing. But I remember I was I watched that and I was, you know, I was like, I was like, look at these fucking look at these dudes. I was like, I just, I, I wanna He's doing it. Yeah. I wanna yeah, I wanna I, I wanna be feeling. there. Yeah. Man. And I when, know that feel. I know exactly what you're talking about. And it's about. like, it's like, you know, like, and that was the fucking, the seat. That was the, that was the real shit. You guys are in the fucking house. You're giving each other shit. It's like real. It's the beginning of the reality TV. Dude, R.I.P. Ralphie May, man. Me and Ralphie would smoke oh, God, yeah. in the bathroom. We would take our microphones off and smoke in the bathroom because yeah. they had cameras on us all day. No, I will say I was on the last, first season of the Last Comic Standing. Thank you for bringing it up. Uh, but as I look back on it, it was very, one of the funniest things I've ever done or will probably ever do 
is share a bunk bed with dad fan on national television. I literally shared a bunk bed with him. I slept in the same room. He was the top bunk and I was the bottom bunk. And they had camera guys come in and take us. <laughs> It's not like that season's not, I'm, I've seen clips of it and I could dig it out and put it up there, but I'm like, yeah. you know, I was so young and it's so weird. And it yeah, definitely I mean, looks old. It's crazy to look at it. Yeah. But because I mean, like, I, how long were you 20 doing? years ago. That was 2003. And it's 2003. Right. I started, I, right. I started in 04. So it was right. Yeah. But I was definitely like thinking about that. So then I would watch Premium Blend and be critical of people. But I remember I was I was a, I was a fan of you watching that show. I was like I I thought you got robbed Aww. when you fucking. I remember I remember Bobbert. I remember Aww. you. <laughs> like that's how much I remember that. Show. Oh yeah, thank you, Chris. You know what yeah, I mean? my, so my, my I, longer I, five minute bits that I would do stoned out of my mind in San Francisco <laughs> at the punchline. So yeah, I got that. But you, I got you, on TV. Yeah, you I know. Felt the universe click in i felt yeah the thing is is like you, you re, it, the thing i'm reading is like it is the constant so if you know who you are and you know where you're going there ha you have to know the constant and the constant is people say it's the grind or whatever but if you really like it you know you don't have to put it towards any type of degree but you just got to do the constant and have faith and know that shit kicks in so if you, yeah. you you know if you do the cons and keep going right oh so and so blow up I don't give a shit so and so's a billionaire I've seen so many people go all the way up and now that I've been around I've seen so many people so many kings get their head chopped off uh, like yeah. that's what I, I like fame is another thing I've been reading about Buddhist stuff like high stature does change you as a person it's really hard to change back. If you go from super duper famous, like I even, I got a little near that and I felt the pressure. But if you go all the way there, like it's, it, it changes you and it changes how people react to you. It's a very scary thing. Like you could tell. You can happens. handle it. You What's can that? do it. Oh you yeah, can I handle can handle it. it now. Now that I'm almost 50, I can totally, <laughs> I know it's a business and all of that. Yeah. You know, I, I, cause I, that's how, I mean, I've seen it. It's like, you know, being you know, since 2004, watching people go up and down and blah, and, and it's like you know what it is, and you know it's temporary no matter what, and it's like you hope that you can do some good work. You know, that's that's all it is, man. That's all it is. It, it's like, and it's and like if you were uh, a nice dude. That's all I care about. Like, like after I die, I yeah. just want people to be like, oh, he was a good dude. Like that's all you want. <laughs> It's so easy to be a good dude. Yeah, all it's you like, want is it's, just be it's like, like easier. Yeah, but then when a dick dies, everybody's like, yo, people don't say shit when somebody they ain't die. Like, you know, but when the cool, when the nice guy dies, everybody's just like, oh, that, not that dude. Right. Um, uh, yeah. I want, I, I want to get famous enough that my death is a, is a news alert. I really, <laughs> I want everybody's phones to buzz when I die. That's all. Is that so much to ask? Yeah, yeah, Is that yeah, everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> this was a good time, man. Thank you. Thanks for doing this. Chris. You're too cool. I've always loved you. I've, I'm, you're hilarious. You're nice. You're great. And you're going to, you know, I just know that uh, your writing is on point and your chill vibe is uh, what we need right now. Both of us, man, right back at you. All those things for you as well, man. It's our time. It's time for chill motherfuckers. Yeah, they, they have you know what I mean? It's time to, they send don't need all, a, it's time to send in Chris and Rob. The you world know, does not need a leather jacket. Out. Yeah, the, the world doesn't need a leather jacket and a toothpick yelling at you right now. You know what I mean? Like that That kind of, I mean, not if you're that kind of comedian, that's fine. I'm not saying that you can't be uh the leather jacket uh toothpick guy you know whatever it's all good but yeah, that's I, cool, I, but you know who else is good the dude that ruins the curve quit working so hard everybody there's dudes ruining the curve you know what i'm saying they work so hard now i gotta work as hard as this motherfucker i don't want to work that hard <laughs> you know yeah 
Well, uh, that's yeah, the thing about they're... show business is like the natural dudes that it doesn't work out because it's the dudes that aren't natural that have to like they have to go for it all the way and work their dick off and it's, and that's the constant you do have to work your dick off there's, it does come down some... to work that's why you can't hate on a lot of people it's like dude worked his dick off yeah and there's no to the ladies there's like too. a million it was like it yeah you know you met a a, a metaphorical dick but. Yeah. There is a, you know, this is another thing you, you and Vince were talking about, is that there's like uh, all these different paths, you know, there's no like one path. So it's just like, you just find your way and no one's going to, nobody can guide you particularly, like they can't even give it to you because you got to, you got to entertain a room full of people. You got to entertain a theater full of people if you want to go somewhere right and it's like nobody can force that to happen you know even it it, whatever so it's like i don't begrudge anybody anything but uh i do think it's time for chill dudes i think our i think it's a it's going to be it's it's going to happen okay and uh, and we're going to do it out in la i got you got to you got to produce our next episode when I come out to LA, we'll go somewhere. You take me to the bomb because they got bomb ass coffee shops in LA. They got yeah. They got they got. We could. I mean, everywhere has got good coffee, but LA's got some horchata blends. They're doing intelligentsia. They're doing all kinds of crazy shit. Or we can go do a bodega. That's what I like about this show is that I want to take it everywhere, and I want to do it we in don't, person. We don't have bodegas. We only have liquor stores. You know that. Yeah, you Which got is kind of like a project. I lived in my the street yeah. from 7 Eleven. I lived on Western and Melrose, dude, in this apartment. I had my own apartment oh, right on. on the corner. And uh, you, there's a, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I got a coffee every day at the 7 Eleven next door. And then there was a Kentucky Fried Chicken, the most beautiful Kentucky Fried Chicken. It might be still there. It's on Western. It looks like a cathedral. And uh, I got on this fave that they had these. It was called the twist. It was literally a, a fried chicken burrito, and I started eating those like every day. I was single and high, and just moved to LA. But I remember it kind of messed with me. I was like, I gotta stop eating these. It does sound good, though. <laughs> I have to try. I have to go over there. No, no don't, 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 because there's, there's, there's really good, much healthier food out there. But maybe give it. No, a I'm not. If you see it. Yeah, sure. I, I'll end up eating it eventually. It's, it's in my head. <laughs> All right. But, uh, right on, man. All right, brother, man. Uh, yeah, call me whenever, man. Anytime. I'm always yep. uh, happy to take a random phone call. Okay, so, I'll give you back on the... I want to have you back on the podcast. And let's yeah. when you get to come to LA yeah. and New York, give me a shout. You know where I'm at. Right on, man. All, All right, right, cool, man. I'll see you All later. Right, Chris. Thank you, brother.